and welcome. It is a overcast-ish day, beautiful-ish. Yeah, it's a overcast-ish, gray-ish. It's a grayish day in the in the city of angels. This is the Nicholas Natalie Show. I am your host, Nicholas Natalie. I meet with individuals each week uh, that have found life strategies to live a more fulfilling life. Today is no exception. We we have a very special guest. His name. Tanner Reisner. Yo, what up? Seasons greetings. Se- seasons are greeted. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel greeted into your season? I do. I always feel greeted into seasons, uh, mainly because when seasons change, that's always when the allergies kick in. So I always Perfect. feel very greeted. Greeted with those seasons. allergies. Yeah. Straight in the nostrils, the senses. Oh, hardcore in in the nostril sinus area oh that's the worst it's always the worst i always get it in the eyeballs i get i get watery eyes really yeah that's how i'm greeted that sounds awful that's pretty that bad. sounds worse bless if you're hearing 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 <laughs> any noises that's because we're living i had not heard this word until i saw you use it the fantasy mm. i have not heard that was that an original uh i don't know actually uh, I feel like it was something that I just, when I was talking to you, I feel like it just came out. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd seen, I feel like it's probably something I'd seen on one of the thousand Instagram uh, like, things that I've followed. Yeah. But I couldn't, it's not something that I could tell you where I got it from, if, okay. if that makes sense. I'll give it to you then. Well, I appreciate I'll, it. I I'll will say, happily <laughs> accept it. In history, I will go down as the man who created Vantasy. Vantasy. Dang. So people who are dreaming about the van life. Welcome, world. Yeah, take that world. So I got a, I got a lots of questions loaded up. Dude, I'm all about it. Let's go. You were born in Durant, Oklahoma. Yes, yeah, so uh, I couldn't read that even if I wanted to. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, so technically, I was born in Roswell, Georgia. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that was through a loop already. All yeah, right. oh yeah, right out of the gate. That's where we start. That's where okay. we end. Okay. Loops all around. All right, perfect. Um, so yeah, I was born in Roswell, Georgia, which is where my mom is from, Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, my grandma lived in the Atlanta area, um, and my dad is from Durant, Oklahoma. Okay. Oh wow. Which is oddly enough, family history is very strange because my mom's dad was also in that area. Yeah at some point like in Durant and like he went to school in Oklahoma very like mixed yeah, like yeah. paths um so my parents met in Durant and then when my mom was pregnant they went out to visit her mom and then just stayed out there oh, nice. for the remainder of that pregnancy and birth and then <laughs> at like 6 months 6 months after we were born uh they drove back and then raised us in Durant. Is there any reason why, like, other than to just visit, or they wanted you to be born not in not in Durant? See, th- I've never asked that question ah. because, like, I was it was always Durant. We were always in Durant. That's where like my dad is from. That's where like the Reisner family, clan, yeah. yeah, the Reisner clan, um, always been from there. Like, we have a road named after us, like because Whoa, like oh my gosh, like we've been there for so long like everyone knows the Reisners it's a thing um that's intense yeah and I think it was I think also my mom uh wanting to get a little more like feel of like where her dad went to college and went to school and everything also was enjoying being there yeah um and her family she didn't have a lot of like extended family I feel like in that area where my grandma was uh because I think most of her family is from Technically, I think they're from Louisiana, like the Baton Rouge area, yeah, yeah. Uh, or Shreveport area, and so in Georgia, it was basically her and her mom. Got it. And so she wanted us to be raised around family, fam. the fam. So, yeah, yeah, a big network of families. So that's why we were raised in Durant. Technically, we were raised in Kennefic. Oh gosh, but Man. it is. There's another layer. It Take is, me there. It is less than a one stoplight town. Oh, it is got it. a one <laughs> one business town essentially. It's like uh, middle of nowhere. Uh, my neighbor was a like cattle farmer, or, like rancher, um, 
and the the store in the area was the corner store, yeah. and it was gas station slash convenience store slash food slash whatever like you needed like yeah. grocery store. It was all in one. Yeah, it was like the essential. For the whole city. Yeah, convenience store for like everyone in that area. Yeah, because Durant was also it's like the biggest local town, which is like six thousand people at the time, I think. Um, and that was where the high school was. So it was like we, you know, or Foot- that's where the school Foot- system yeah. was, football I should school, say. Football school, I imagine. Like, are they, were uh, they yeah. big on the sports? And yeah, Oh, absolutely. Like they were, yeah. As that whole area, it's so yeah. close to Texas. Like, yeah. it's, when I tell people where I'm from, I'll say Duran, Oklahoma. I'm like, where is that? Close to Texas. To, it is North Texas. Like, <laughs> yeah, it is yeah. North Texas. We were, what, 15 minutes away from the Red River. So it's like. It's right there. Same thing. Yeah, it's essentially the same thing. Didn't matter. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. What's there to do out there? Nothing. Oh, Absolutely beautiful. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was... Oh, God. For a long time, there was nothing. Uh, growing up, there was, like, the twin cinemas, which was movie theater, bowling alley combination. Oh, you can't by. get anything better than that. Oh, it was great. Um, Owned but, by the same guy. <laughs> Sorry, yo, say. absolutely. It was the same people. <laughs> and then they went bankrupt and like went out of business when I was in I want to say oh god maybe high school maybe just after high school um but like that was that was it like yeah in the entire area you had the bowling alley and the movie theater and then for even that the entire time I was in college which was in the same town yeah uh, which also sounded like a fake university if I'm being honest southeastern Oklahoma University that can't be a real place oh uh, yeah SOSU southeastern Oklahoma State SOSU SOSU yeah. is that what you guys said you guys yeah. said SOSU yeah we um, <laughs> staff would call it SOSU or uh, SOSU SOSU uh, students so-su. for SOSU <laughs> for a long time <laughs> students called it South Easy uh, Ooh, I kind of like that. That's a good one. Yeah. Like, we, we really liked that so nickname for a, for a long time, yeah. and then the staff really hated us calling it that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, wow. they were like... It took a strong stand. They really did. They were like, you are demeaning the work that you were putting in here by calling this, like, establishment easy and calling, like, the work that oh. you were putting in easy. And I was like, oh, man. Sure. Yeah. I guess. That's... I'm still going to call it South yeah. Easy. You're reading like, a little too much into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was really funny, but... Uh, yeah, so Sue is uh, the home of what is it now? The Thunder, Rolling Thunder. I, I they've mean, changed it a few times. It used to be the Savage Storm, and then. Do you guys have a lot of storms out there? Because you you already have the Oklahoma like tornado yeah. system and everything. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so we have a lot of storms. Like, luckily, Durant is close to the Red River, as well as close to like. Lake Texoma, so which you can is a jump big, in the river if something goes down. You can well, all of out. that, like all of that water, in the area, really navigates like the bigger like tornadoes and stuff like away yeah. from the area. Yeah. So like that whole area is pretty nice. well safe because of that. That's good. Um, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, but it's like home of a lot of Native American tribes, like the Choctaw, uh, like that's where the home. Uh, capital, the Choctaw oh, capital, wow. yeah. is, um, and their headquarters is in Durant, and so like that area, the Savage Storm came from. Oh, there's native like yeah. native land and a lot of native culture here, as well as like the storm system, and then after a while, <laughs> the Choctaw uh, natives were like, okay, cool. Stop. Savage is not a good word. Yeah. Cause I, Intense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, let's not do that anymore. Uh. It's, so it has a changed. different meaning than saying, bro, you're savage. Right, right, right. Yes. Absolutely. You're a savage. Sounds, <laughs> right. You're a monster. Yeah. The yeah. difference between 2019 savage yeah. <laughs> and, like, Disney Pocahontas savage yeah. is, like, Fine line. pretty yeah. yeah, pretty distinct. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, so it's an interesting place. It's a really small town. Home of the like, world's largest peanut? Is that peanut. a fact? That, so that is a fact. Have you seen it? Um, I've seen the statue that we've raised to commemorate it. Oh my gosh, how big is it? Oh, dude, it is. Um, yeah. I couldn't tell you the weight because <laughs> I'm not that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but I mean, it is like it is a good like four feet. I'd say like oh wide. It's like it's like this. So it's like uh, if I remember the story correctly, it was a local farmer because that area was. Local farmer grows largest peanut. That's uh, the headline. Essentially, yeah, because that 
that area is peanut area. Like, there's yeah. a whole, in the middle of town, there's an old rundown peanut factory that, like, I'm sure kids broke into yeah, and like, say, got high watch. and, like, drank and stuff all the time. That's your thing to do out there, yeah. Uh, I mean, essentially, like, yeah. if you weren't doing school extracurriculars. Yeah, because I feel like any kids that I knew, even in high school, I was one of the, like, super nerdy, like, I was part of the academic team, I was part nice. of, like, Good. all yeah. that, like, uh, super nerdy, like, mathlete type stuff, and then played D&D every weekend with my friends, so it was, like, it's a good time. anyone that wasn't doing that they were was, doing, like, they were at the peanut factory. Yeah, like, yeah. partying and, like, yeah. getting drunk and, like, all that stuff, um, and so it was very, you were either doing nothing, mm-hmm. or you were, like, partying and, yeah. like, hanging out with, like, all the county kids and, like, getting drunk at, like, house parties and stuff, like... Those county kids. They're wild, man. They're crazy, like, honestly. Do you have an example? Do you... Oh, man. Um, I couldn't tell you any specific examples of, like, oh, this county kid named Josh did this, but it's, like, the... The the, reputation? Oh, the reputation is wild, because it's just, like, um, the bowling alley, per se. Yeah. Uh, At... uh, I was after 9.30, you knew not to go to the bowling alley because that was, like, county kids start rolling Oh, in. gosh. And it was, like... Oh, gosh. Yeah. Wow. And it was, They're like, gonna ruin the whole thing. Dude, it was... Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, 9.30, like, uh, county kids start rolling in and, like, take over the bowling alley and, like, you know... You don't want to be a part of that. Yeah. Yeah, and it was, uh, you know, they, they they still had, like, this indoor smoking box, like, area where oh they, like... Gosh. They had the smoking room. Yeah. And, like, if you walked on the block, you could smell, like, the weed that, oh. like these people were smoking in this room and then I had a friend uh, a family friend his name was Luther that's he, a dope name yeah uh, Luther Hankins is his full even name. better name it's a great name <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I know of at least two times I want to say three times that like he got stabbed oh my at, gosh at, at the, the bowling, bowling alley yeah because yeah. <laughs> it was like they're uh, just getting like stoned and getting drunk oh. at like 10 30 or 9 30 to 10 like that's when they start rolling in and then by the end of the night, they're just hammered and ready to fight and oh just, like, gosh. literally stabbing people. Dude. Like, yeah, it was, like... Those county kids, the man. county kids, like, really set up a long, like, long line of instances to the not... Debauchery. Just, yeah, to... Just ruining things. Yeah, a lot of skullduggery, like, yeah, going on. And, like, <laughs> so much... <laughs> like, to not hang out with the county kids. Like That was, sounds actually kind of like a, a punk band. County name. kids? So, we're the <laughs> county kids... Yeah, I yeah, and then Skullduggery would be their first, oh. like, album name. Yeah. That's a good one, actually. I like that a lot. Is the album name So Sue? Ooh. So Sue. So, 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 so Sue. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah. Dang. It's a wild place. Um, you got a twin brother. Yeah. Um, I, I got I got, a, I got two questions for oh, you about your please. twin brother. Hit me up. Oh, yeah. First one is we've, we've seen the sitcoms. <laughs> have you done the twin switcheroo? Uh, never. So we've done a few twin switcheroos. No, no way. Oh, uh, that's great. Nothing in the sense of, uh, like, relationship or, like, sexual, like, uh, stuff. We never did anything that way. Um, but, oh, man, the, the times that I could tell you about us switching classes, like, if we... Oh, my gosh. You know, because uh, within every family or, like, siblings, it's one one sibling is better at something something yeah. you know like that's, that's I was, people strengths yeah. yeah I was like better at math and like my brother was better at like, history and stuff and so like it's like hey dude I've got this like, I've got this math quiz that is really gonna kick my ass I'm like tight I got you <laughs> yeah like I'm gonna go to this and like yeah. you I'll go to your math class and take that quiz for you and like it'll be cool oh my so, god! Like, you know we would do that and then on oh, April that's awesome oh it was great yeah. um, and then like so we'd just do that here and there and then on April Fool's Day, we would always switch our full class roster. So oh, we'd that's like so good. For the entire day, just yeah. go from like first period to like yeah, end of yeah. school. Um, and one time. That's so good. It was hilarious. Yeah. And like we always had a good time with it. Uh, and one time, this also like explains how like small and like connected this town yeah. is. Yeah. Um, because it was the principal of that school. Um, his name was Todd. He, uh, after, it was a full day of us switching classes. Yeah. And it was the last period of school. Oh, no. And one, one girl, 
uh, Alexa Stump. I'll never forget. I was in, oh, uh, I forgot what class it was, um, but I remember Alexa 10 minutes into class laughing. and Because all the kids, like, we grew up with these kids yeah, from, like, yeah. from four years old, like, pre-K, like, yeah. kindergarten, all the way till we graduated high school. So, yeah. like, we all knew each other forever. Pretty well, yeah. Um, and so, like, all the kids could easily recognize that we weren't yeah. the other one. Teachers, obviously, had no idea. Yeah. Um, and so, Alexa would laugh and just yell at our teacher, like, that's Tanner, that's not Jesse. Oh, my gosh. And I'm like, Stop. we still have 30 yeah. minutes of class, dude. Like, yeah. what are you... Come on, we gotta succeed. Yeah, Complete like, the mission. Like, you're insane. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, we got... We both got sent to the principal's office. Like, they... Well, how did they... Well, yeah, like, like, they just... She just... The teacher straight up said, who are you? And... Yeah, essentially, it was like, she said... Well, I think it was a mass reaction to mm. where she said that, and I was like, Dude, uh, yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, like five yeah. other kids were like, <sighs> "Yeah, you're ruining Come the show." Yeah. yeah, yeah, like so. I think it was a mass reaction yeah. of like, "Alexa, yeah, like we almost had this." Yeah, we we're so close. Yeah. It's so funny. Yeah. Um, and then so they sent us down to the principal, who was Todd, Todd Harrison, and he was sitting there, and me and my brother were in our chairs yeah. uh, in front of his desk, and he's like, quiet for a second, he goes. Who put you up to this? And he's like, what? What made you want to do this? Like, who, who put you up to this? Yeah. And me and my yeah. brother didn't like, didn't look at each other, didn't say anything. And we just go, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> like we were just yeah. like, Dad did it. Yeah. Dad did it. And he goes, Oh, Jackie. Yeah. And we immediately start sweating, and we're like, mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. What do you? <laughs> well, you know our dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's like, Oh yeah, we went to high school together. Let me give oh, him, let me give him a call real quick. Oh gosh picks up the phone and he like starts dialing and you can just see us just squirming Sweat, yeah. and sweating you don't, you don't have to call him yeah you straight know, up you we're know. like no no it's fine like we'll tell him that you said like <laughs> this and like we'll relay like, yeah, yeah like yeah. it's fine like yeah. he doesn't you know yeah. uh, he'll be very upset if like he knows we didn't <laughs> if he's do interrupted it. right now it's yeah. just a bad time and then he just like he looks at us as the phone is like quote ringing yeah and he's like April Fools <gasps> and like hangs up the phone that's perfect it is so good and he like laughs he's like now get back to class the correct class oh, that's like, funny. and sent us back and like all the teachers were laughing and having a good yeah. time about it um, but like I'd say that was like the biggest extent of our like switcheroo yeah like our tomfoolery is yeah. like uh, and then we'd also play that with like our parents where that's funny that was always a good one yeah where cause we it wasn't just us it was me, my brother, and then I, we had an older sister who's a year older than us. Yeah. Um, and then so our sister, we we would always, like, pick on each other and, like, we'd always fight. Um, and then if our mom ever, like, started yelling at either me or Jesse, she would yell at me and, like, Tanner, you blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I'm like, Mom, what? what? Who do you think I am? Yeah, like, yeah. go yell at Tanner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. What do you mean? Go, Look why are you yelling to. at me? Yeah, yeah. Like, what is wrong with you? And just like leave. Yeah. And she'd go yell at Jesse. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, what? Why? He's like, what? I didn't yeah. do anything. Yeah. And she's like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Which one are you? Yeah. And so like, we would play that That's with our parents. Perfect. Like, yeah. it was great. It was a good time. We always had a lot of fun with that. Um, college, we didn't as much. He, Same college? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, for for the for our freshman year, they started catching on. It wasn't as fun. No, it was actually for our freshman year. Uh, that was the only year we were in that school together. And yeah. then at our sophomore year, my brother moved to a different school, um, OCU. No. Uh, UCO, OCU, OCU. I want to say. Um, and. But I was in the theater department, and he was in. Oh, God, the music department? Right. I forgot what system he was in at that point. Um, but he, uh, I for, like, it just never was a thing in the theater department that I was a twin and, like, it was never discussed, yeah, never yeah, talked yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, and so he would walk in after, like, months and, like, almost a full year of us going to the school together. Yeah. He'd walk into our theater department, and we are totally different. Like, he, at the time, had a mullet. Oh, my God. Uh, it was, like, huh. very, like, hardcore, like, shaved head mullet. Um, Intense. Yeah, and he like he's also like tatted out. He's got like tattoos like down his leg and like wow. arm and his chest. Really blue for you. 
Yeah. You know, like, you can, no more switcheroo. Well, yeah, yeah. But what was funny is, like, it didn't. That's what everyone just assumed that I had gone out and, like, oh, done all this oh stuff. Oh, my gosh. And, like, over the last couple of days, they were yeah. like, Tuesday's what different. in the world? Like, just mad. Yeah. Because, like, the theater department was like, you have ruined your body. Yeah, like, your yeah. haircut. Yeah. And, like, our teacher, my teachers, like, lit him up. And we're like, you, that is the stupidest thing you could have done. You are oh such an gosh. idiot. And he's like, I think you're talking to the wrong person. <laughs> I think you've mistaken me for my brother. Yeah. And they're like, what are you, brother, what are you talking about? It's like, yeah. Yeah, so I'm Jesse. I'm his <laughs> twin brother. And they're like, oh my god, I'm so I'm an, sorry. I'm an idiot. Yeah. I am so stupid. He got he got accosted a lot of times. Like, even out, like, at Walmart. Like, not even at the college, but, like, at Walmart. Yeah. Like, teachers or, like, students that, like, hadn't met him while I was there would definitely, like, mistake him for me. Yeah. As this, like, alternate... Like it's I just like ego you. Yeah, yeah, like I just like snapped one day and was like, I'm gonna get like twelve yeah, tattoos yeah. and just like shave my head and like yeah. get my ears gauged and like yeah. he also had a septum gauge. So oh, I was like man. Like hardcore. The just, whole thing. Yeah, yeah, just all around. But people were like, Yeah, that's feasible to do in like three days' time. Yeah. yeah and yeah. just like those tattoos look like they could heal in yeah. three days. <laughs> like there's no like cream or yeah, anything on yeah. them. They look faded. Yeah. So like they're fine. They're fine. Um yeah, it's like at I, that point. There wasn't as much fun mm. in the switch, yeah. but I did have a lot of fun with him Doing getting it. in a lot of trouble for no reason. How did he take those reprimands? He was what pissed. I want to know. He would like, I oh, he was, every time I went out, I'd be upset. Oh, yeah. uh, he he would like scream. He oh like, my gosh! Well, because like it's hey, not me. Yeah. yeah, he would just be in the middle of. He'd be you know grabbing Doing something, yeah. grabbing sandwich meat at Walmart, yeah. and my professor would come up and be like you know like giving him like the speech of like you've ruined your life like yeah. you've done this and this and yeah. this and he's turned around he's like you need to shut the F up because yeah. you need to check who you're talking to before yeah. you oh, start God. going yeah. into this yeah. and they're like who whoa you? you've never yeah he's like exactly I'm not who you think I am and he would just yeah. like, scream at him and like it would put him in their place and they were like oh my god I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I'll never do this yeah uh or like, he was always mad, and he would yeah. always come home, uh, cause we share we shared like a dorm room, and he'd always come home and be like, I just cannot go anywhere. Yeah. He's like, I can't I go can't anywhere. Do anything. Yeah. He's like, I hate that like you were in the theater department, because like everyone would yeah. know who I was. And he's like, I hate that you're in it, and I hate that everyone just thinks I'm you. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm so I don't know how to help you. Yeah. Uh, he hated it. It was, it was hilarious. It was great times. Was that your final decision? I'm getting out of here. I'm going to L.A. Just just for his sake. No, it's, uh, I for a long time, I uh, I actually wanted to go to New York. Really? Yeah. Because uh, more theater? Yeah, I grew up uh, doing theater um, since we were kids. Like uh, When we were four years old, we had a Shakespearean festival every year. In, no. Yeah, the um, Oklahoma Shakespearean Festival in Durant, um it was awesome. They had, like, a children's program, and, like, when you were four till you were 12, it was oh, essentially, wow. like, yeah. a, like a... Like an academy, like a school training? Well, it was a summer program, so it was essentially, okay. like, daycare for people, like, for parents Got who it. still had, like, jobs Got in the it, summer. Yeah. Uh, so they were like, yeah, drop your kids off, like, you know, pay us a couple hundred bucks for the summer, and, like... We'll be chilling. Yeah, we'll, like, teach your kids, like, to do... And they would always do, like, Disney films. Uh, and they'd do stage productions with kids. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, each kid would get, like, a line yeah. in the entire production. Uh, and then we would perform those before, like, the main stage, like, Shakespearean shows or, like, oh. stuff like that. Um, so I did that since I was, like, four years old. And then I got out of it. And then, uh, you know, when I aged out, um, like, 11 or 12. And then... Uh, I also did within that time frame like a Shakespearean show that they recruited me for. Oh, that's exciting! Uh, yeah, I think I was eight or nine. I did Titus Andronicus as like my first um, profession quote professional like theater yeah. show. Yeah. Um, and I was Young Lucius. Um, it was that's a, really, a dope name yeah, too. It was, yeah, it's a really fun show. It is also like terrifyingly like gruesome and like bloody and like. Yikes. I mean, the whole plot point, like, ma most of the big plot points are, like, family killing each other's oh family, and, like, 
one of the big moments is like um, someone cooks the like this grandfather of like say for instance I'm young Lucius my grandfather cooks Tamara's sons into a pie that he serves to everyone at dinner oh my god and so like and like there's scenes on the oh my god yeah it's like it's crazy um there's a really really fun movie version that uh, Anthony Hopkins is in um it's very interesting uh very like modernized you know somewhat like Romeo plus Juliet yeah. with like Leo and everything like in that same style. Yeah. Uh tried to modernize it. Um but, you know, and there's scenes on the stage production where they're like hanging upside down and he's talking to them and like slitting their throats and like they're draining blood on the stage. Is this when you were still a kid? Yeah, I was like 8. Like Oh eight my gosh. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, I mean like for the most part did I you wasn't... process? Did you process? Like, did you were you aware of those plots? Um, yeah, I like because I watched the film and like I yeah. did my research on it, and so I was like, oh okay, okay, that's a thing. Okay, I yeah. understand. That's okay. nuts, guys. Yeah. They're like crazy. Yeah. Like those are weird, wild, like dangerous people. I Look get at those it. Dangerous guys. Yeah. I don't want to be part of that. Those are villains. Yeah. Um. So like I did in that way, um, but. I mean, I didn't see a lot of those scenes anyway, because on those scenes, I'm not, I'm not sitting there yeah. watching them do yeah. that. But um, yeah, so and then I got out of it when I aged out, and then when I was in high school, they brought back um, the thing. It was called teen theater, and so when you were, I think they restarted it when I was like fifteen or sixteen, uh, and I came back and did a couple more years of that, and then I did theater at South Easy, and, um, just, you know, forever, I, that's always what I had done, so I always assumed, like, oh, I'll go to New York and do theater, yeah, or, like, yeah. do that. That's and, the, the reasonable next step, or yeah. feasible. Yeah, it was just always, yeah. like, that that's makes what, sense. That's what you do, yeah. Yeah, it just makes sense. Um, and then when I was in college, my, my sophomore year, mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine, maybe it was late freshman year, um, a friend of mine, did, he was a communications major because uh, we didn't have any film or anything at the college uh, but for one of his communications classes they had to do like a small film Yeah. Uh, and he he's a writer and so he wanted to do like a big production oh yeah uh, tell and the so, whole story you know? yeah and so he came over to the theater department and like held auditions and like wow. did this whole like casting yeah. thing uh, which was really cool and I had never been like a part of like a film casting yeah, audition yeah um, and so I was like, oh, okay, this is fun, and, like, I want to see what that's about. Yeah. And then, um, I got the, I got the role as the villain in this, like, zombie western film. I mean, after your play experience, yeah. you had to be the villain. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was, like, a zombie western, like, post-apocalyptic, like, film. Um, and I was on that set, and we were there for, like... 12 to 14 hours yeah and the first day and I was just so excited and just so jazzed and like it was totally different yeah. than theater and it was, it was like new. yeah and it yeah. was new and like refreshing and it was also like oh well it's more immediate because yeah. like with the theater thing it was like oh I'm doing like three months of rehearsals to and, like, nail to, this thing yeah, yeah to like just get it in yeah. and then you know, then I do that same show, you know, what, uh, five times a week for, like, two months, yeah. you know, um, uh, and so it was like, oh, we do it, and then I never do it again. Yeah. So I was like, like, that's it. And that's, then I can that's move on. That's legacy, yeah. Yeah, and then I can move on to the next thing, and, yeah. like, tell more stories quicker yeah. with, like, a broader, like, Obviously, uh, if done right, but, like, a broader... Appeal. Appeal yeah, and, like, can yeah. easily get more distribution and more eyes on yeah, it, especially yeah. with, like, the internet age and everything. Yeah. Uh, and I just, like, immediately fell in love with it that first day. And I was like, oh, well, I've got, like, two more years, so I guess I'll finish out my theater degree, but... Film is where it's at. But this is... Yeah, this is what I'll do. Um, and then from there, just started doing, like, short films and stuff in, like, Dallas and Austin and then... Um, by audition then, or by your own, your own creation, your friends? Uh, right? Audition. Oh, dope. Yeah. Um, got, like, there was a casting office in Oklahoma City, or er, Stillwater, um, 
uh, Chris Fryerhofer was his name. He's an awesome guy, and he's still like casting a bunch of stuff, and he has a lot of credits. Um, one of the nicest guys. Uh, I went up and auditioned for a few things with him, um, and did a couple shorts in that area. Went down to Austin and filmed for like a week on this really fun short called Roadkill Zoo. That yep. was like my first professional film. Yeah. Uh, that I did down there, um, and then. 2014, when I graduated from South Easy, uh, I took like the essentially the summer to work two jobs to gain money to just like move. Yeah. Um, out here. Yeah, and then I moved out here. But it seemed like you did a road trip beforehand, right? Just to see what was going down, or did you just no no no? Come I, here? I I just straight drove out. Like wow. I didn't I didn't come out. I didn't check out LA. I didn't. Wow, you went blind. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know anyone. That was out here. That's hardcore. I I knew there was one alumni that I knew out here. His name was Chris Page, and I think since I moved out here, I, I think I've seen him twice. Oh like gosh. I yeah. I hung out with him like a week after like I came to LA just to see like yeah what's up and like what he does and like how yeah. he's like figuring it out. I mean yeah. And then I think I've seen him once yeah. after that. But um, still, I bet you that gave you insight. You know. Yeah like, yeah for sure. Yeah I definitely saw like. Uh, cause he was doing the same thing, like film and like TV and stuff. And yeah. I was like, okay, so like I can expect these things. Yeah. This is what you're doing. You've been out here for a while. This is what I can expect. Great. Um, and so yeah, it was, I, the week before I could have actually, what's interesting is I almost did like the van life straight out of the gate. Yeah. Because I, it was that mentality of, like, because Durant is such a small town. It's like, mm -hmm. we always classify it as a black hole. Because, like, even people that get out, like, Still leave Durant, eventually come back oh and, gosh. like, like settle there. And, like, yeah. somehow it's Durant always pulls people back in. It's familiar, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy, like, black hole area. And so it was one of those moments where I had set a date uh, when I was, uh, when I was leaving November 1st. Yeah. Um, and I had set the date... And it was, if I don't leave by... I know myself, and I know Durant, and I know this town, I know this area. Yeah, yeah. I know so how it if, goes. If I don't leave... If I push back this date even once, yeah, I'm stuck. Like, it's yeah. going to keep getting pushed back. I'm going to keep, like, giving excuses. I'm going to keep doing that, and I'll never get out. Yeah. So it was... I didn't have a place to live. I didn't, like... I didn't know anyone, so I didn't know who to rent from. I didn't know, yeah. like, the areas that were nice and what's safe. What's good, what's bad, yeah. Yeah, and so I was like, well, I'll just drive out, live in the car for, like, a few weeks until I can figure something out, and yeah. then, like, whatever. Um, and then a friend of a friend of a friend... Oh, my gosh. Eventually, like, it was one of those, like, telephones. I was gonna say, that seems like L.A. right there. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, essentially, it was, like, um, a buddy of mine who had gotten me into the theater program at uh, South Easy, he... It was a week before I was leaving, and he said, hey, I know a friend who needs a roommate. If you're, like, since you're leaving next week, like, yeah. here's his number. And I was like, sure. Yeah. Called him. Uh, and he was like, oh, actually, no, I don't need a roommate, but I have a friend who needs oh a roommate. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, oh, okay, it's already mm, getting a little getting sketch. a little sketch. Yeah. I was like, okay. A little suspicious, yeah. And then, like, called his friend. He's like, I don't need a roommate. No, not another. But oh, this gosh. guy needs a roommate. And I'm like, oh, okay, I guess. This is what it takes to get to LA. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Like, get me in touch with this guy. Yeah. Um, he was super nice, uh, and, but it was also, like, still pretty sketch, because yeah. I got a hold of him, and then it was like, hey, you know, like, let's text and, like, see if, like, yeah, I like see if you. there's some gel, yeah. Yeah, um, and then it was essentially, I forgot if it was 24 hours or 48 hours, but within the, within two days of, like, talking to him, I was still in Durant, and he was like, hey, man, I know this is going to sound super sketch, but we have to sign the lease tomorrow oh so if you're in we need you need to send me money and like we need to get this going yeah so he's like so you need to either send me this like what two months of rent yeah yeah or not and i was like uh, i've been <laughs> texting you for like two days yeah you seem yeah. all right like you seem, oh you did it you went for it nice yeah i was like yeah you seem chill like you like x-men comics like yeah yeah, I guess. Yeah. And, like, sent him, uh, sent him rent, and then I, the first day I met him was when I moved into the apartment, um, 
and then I, I lived with him for two years. Oh, see, yeah. there you go. He was That's awesome, fun. and like he, uh, like it was a great. It worked out really well. He introduced me to a lot of like a lot of my friends that I still are, am, today, yeah, yeah, still am really close with today. A lot of friends that got me like some really important jobs in my career, and like uh, got me into a lot of places that I would not have been able to get to yeah. if I hadn't have met him. Um, so it worked out really, really well. Um, but it was a crazy, like turn of events. Yeah, and I was totally anticipating. Assignment. Living in my, oh, you know, yeah, living in yeah. my Kia Rio yeah. for a few weeks until I figured it out. Yeah. Um, but it just happened to not work out that way. Um, so then when you came out here, what was the first job? Was it Smosh or was it something else? No, the first job was PacSun. Dope. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's I, making it work. Yeah, I, uh, I took a couple of months because, you know, I'd never been out here. I'd never seen the West Coast. I'd never... Yeah. Uh, seen like I'd seen the Gulf of Mexico I was gonna say have you seen the ocean uh, yeah I saw the Gulf but like I'd never seen like the coastline you know what I mean Um, and so I went and like uh, my brother and I road tripped out here for that first week Um, and then we just like went around LA and did like all this all this stuff and like went to Santa Monica Pier oh love um, and did the whole thing and then um, rightfully so Exactly what you should do when you first move out. Yeah, and then it. I think I I think I didn't work for two months, two or three months, um, and then I just got so bored because uh, yeah. I I'm not the type of person to not do something. Yeah, like yeah, if yeah. I don't have something to do, I you'll find something. I to do. freak out. Yeah. yeah. Um. So then I was like, okay, I got to do something. Um. I don't know what what nine to five job can I not care about? Yeah. Uh, and so then I went to, I was in Santa Monica and went to like PacSun, um, and interviewed for a job there and got a job. And I was there for like three months before I pieced out to go work tech support for a tablet company, um, which was a whole different experience. Um, so yeah, it was bad, ugly, good. Uh, it it was really good when I started, and then transitioned really hardcore into bad. Um, it was just it was a nice company. Um, they is like a children's tablet company, so they oh wow yeah. Um, and the way they did it was really cool. They structured them specifically for like parental controls, and then yeah. they also had a huge line that was dedicated specifically towards like autistic children, and they like did all this really great work for yeah, children. Like stuff, yeah. And it was really cool. Um, and then after a while it just became like no one really cared and like uh, you could just see like because I eventually I moved up to where I could I was a part of a team that was uh, that had a budget like we all had our personal budgets to where like if we wanted to do something extra for someone that like called in and like oh that's kind of sweet yeah so it was you know like oh if this this you know 70 year old uh, grandfather who had to take over the uh, support of these two kids uh, if he had to do that and like his tablet broke and he doesn't have money to get a new one I could out of my budget oh, like, pay for it that's kind of nice yeah. yeah it's great yeah um, and so that was like a real good highlight but then as well like immediately it was oh but if we want to we get to put that money to something that we want and so it was okay well like I want to do this because like yeah he really needs it and like yeah. this is really important to me and yeah. like cool but this lady on the phone over here is talking about like she's gonna give us a bad review on Facebook so uh, we need you to dip like yeah 500 bucks out of your budget to like yeah. just pay for all this stuff yeah I'm like, okay so you really don't care it's like conflict of interest almost yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so like that really bugged me and there were some other like technical specs that they like <sighs> just weren't yeah. like doing right like they would tell you like oh, this tablet has, like, 32 gigs, and then, like, I would dig into it, and I'm like, no, it doesn't. It has 16 gigs. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And they're like, oh, no, like, it's, because of all the stuff we put on there, mm. it's, like, actually 32, but mm. we put on 16 gigs worth of stuff, and I'm like, uh, what? No. I'm yeah. like, that's not chill. That's yeah. not cool. Yeah. Um, and Lying. so, like, yeah, and so, like, I had a real big, like, I was really loud about it with them. Um, Sounds rightfully so. Yeah, and so, like, it was really cool at first, and then really delved toward the end of it. I just got really fed up and hated it, hated all of it. Um, but it was really good because I 
transitioned that, my roommate at the time, uh, who's the same guy that I moved in with originally, um, he was working on set and doing grip work and like all that type of stuff. Nice. Uh, and I set him down and I was like, hey man, I am done with the like nine to five. I can't do this anymore. Like I hate working. Bring me on set. Like I, yeah, I hate working yeah. for these other people. Like let me, like teach me everything you know for me to just be like, helpful like yeah your dude to like come in and like help whenever you need it yeah he's like okay cool and so he taught me everything that he knew um and then like the next week i started working on sets with him and then like from there um i started working for free just to get more onset experience yeah Yeah, as like a pa for uh a buddy at the time his uh youtube channel oh is it alex yeah beautiful yep um so i was working on his youtube channel for a long time uh, or for a couple of months for free. And then he invited me to work for Defy Media nice. for a YouTube channel called The Warp Zone. Uh, and I PA'd for them. And then they liked me, and a couple of the producers at Defy liked me. So they tossed me around for like a few weeks between like Screen Junkies, Clever, and like Smosh yeah. and uh, The Warp Zone. And then after like a month of that, they brought me on full, like quote, full time freelance yeah. to um, Smosh. And then I'd say after, like, two months of PAing for them, their assistant director left. Beautiful. uh, For... Open spot, baby. Uh, So he he left, and Alex knew that I had done um, uh, stage management for theater. Yeah, And he's like, it's essentially the same. Yeah. And he's like, so if you want that spot... Yeah, like, step on up. Yeah, and I was like, all right, yeah. And then I did that for, like, three years. Yeah. Um, So... Yeah, it was like, like I was saying, like every, it all worked out essentially because I didn't have a plan. Yeah. Coming out to LA, because Alex was introduced to me by Taylor. Wow. Um, and so it was like a very meant to be like, sort of deal. Yeah, very like random. Like you Sequence. say, meant to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm curious as to, um, so Smosh is this huge YouTube channel. Yeah. What's something that you wish? fans knew like well if they don't that they just wouldn't you know um i don't know because i feel like the thing that i like about what the fans see Mm -hmm. is that they don't see everything yeah because like uh, with any company there's like stuff that you don't like there's stuff behind the scenes that isn't exact like it is not perfect perfect, and like that's what i like about what is seen by the fans is like you get to see the good like the product yeah because like everything (laughs) everything backstage while it's all good and I have like a great time it's like it's chaos there it is it is absolute chaos um so like I don't know if there's anything that I would like that I would want the fans to know that's not already known you know what I mean like there's nothing that I'm like fans need like Wish you know, fans would know top things about. you don't know yeah. about Smosh. Like, <laughs> yeah. there's nothing like that that yeah. I would like ever really need to say to them. Um, just like, they're just they're people, you know, just yeah. like everyone else. And like, um, I think that is a big thing that I've seen with all those talent that I worked with for a long time. It's like, in that space that they're in, it was actually really interesting to see like how affected they are by the fans. Their because comments, like, their opinions. Oh uh, yeah, like the way that people treat. Like, even, like, new incoming members of that channel was devastating. Really? Like, yeah, there were a lot of fans that, um, and oddly enough, it was a lot of, uh, the female casts Mm. that would come on, and for months, like, it would be, like, they wouldn't allow them to, like, look at comments. Like, hey, it's just gonna upset you, like, don't, don't look, like, uh, like, I'm sure, I know I've heard, like, people posting like death threats and stuff on there because like ah this like girl is doing blah 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 and like is stupid she coughed four times and right like people are like just stupid in that way so like and that is like that really affects them and so like I feel like if anything it's that it's like fans a lot of times don't realize the impact their words that they have because like you can see even if you're just looking at comments like and that was a thing like being behind the scenes and producing and assistant directing and all that stuff like that was something that we really liked and that we saw 
uh, and really kept up with was like we could see the impact that we had on fans. Yeah. Um, and so which is beautiful. Yeah, which is great, yeah. and like yeah. we love seeing that, and we love like you know going to conventions and like mm. seeing those people get really emotional and like really um, like impactful and like really tied in and like knowing everything about everyone. It's like really awesome, but they don't recognize that that like seeing that actually like really hits home. Hits home. Yeah. yeah, it's like there are like multiple times where. Uh, even for us, like, you know, the producers and, like, uh, assistant directors and, like, PAs and, like, all of us, and, like, sound guys, like, we'd go out to the conventions and, like, some fans would be, like, like, come and ask for our autographs because, like, they wow. recognize us from, like, wow. yeah, and, like, want photos of us and, like, they're, like, oh, yeah, well, we saw you on, like, this episode and, like, this and this and this. Wow. And, like, we'd walk back, like, to, like, the green room or whatever and we'd be, like, oh, my God. How like, do they that's... know? Yeah so awesome yeah. that like they're so in tune and like that's how that's the effect that we have like someone that's on screen for 10 seconds yeah. is like you have recognized yeah. yeah um and so it like really hits home and like really affects the way that we feel we're doing yeah uh, and so when you know when 200 people comment like just stuff that's like really grotesque about people mm, and like yeah. saying like all of these bad things it's like it like there have been times where like people didn't come into work because they're like hey like I'm it's it's depressing like yeah, I don't gotta I don't want right? to yeah. do this anymore yeah uh, so like that's probably the big thing it's almost like a two way street it is it really yeah. is because like we are because you have to like recognize where your fans are at to know if you're going the right way yeah so like you, you have to you take you stock to. in like yeah. what they say so yeah. it is really important to hear those things and so it really affects you so i'd say like that is easily probably the biggest one where it's like your words do get through and your words are important yeah so like make sure it's constructive yeah or good yeah because like, if it's just negative for negative sake not worth it it's not worth it. Like, yeah. it doesn't treat anyone good. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So. So what's your takeaway moving forward when, with your actions on set? Like, how are... Because you're affirmed by that. Like, what... Yeah, yeah. What, what, uh... I think that experience just taught me a lot about set, like, how to treat people, just in general. Because, like, I've always been, you know, small-town Oklahoma kid. It's like, you're, gro you're raised, like, firm handshake yeah good smile and like yeah. always nod yes sir yes ma'am like yeah. do whatever you can and like always help out yeah like it's always like what we were raised on um and like never treat people bad yeah um and so but being on set it really allowed me to see like the perspective of other people where they're coming from because like there were <laughs> there were producers that i would oh my gosh I would butt heads with so hard because like we just had different personalities different personalities or like different perspectives on like little things like food like I had a producer and like I'm actually really close with her like we're yeah. really good friends yeah um but like she would I would scream at her because like halfway through the day after lunch it'd be like 40 minutes after lunch yeah and then I'd walk walk past the lunch table and, you know, those 55-gallon, like, trash cans oh, yeah. are just filled with, like, catering baskets yeah. of, like, food yeah. that are still warm and, like... And good. And fine. Yeah. And, you know, we have a 25-man crew yeah. that's going to want to munch on something. It's like, why... Why throw it away so Why early? are you wasting yeah. this food when, like, if nothing else, I can walk down Street. Wilshire Boulevard and hand oh, it yeah. out to like some homeless person or yeah. like anyone I can do anything with it yeah um and it was like a huge thing for me especially the last few months of Smosh um but it was also like I recognize like from her perspective like this is why I'm doing it and like it is because of these reasons yeah and like that was definitely not one that I ever backed down from because yeah. it was like yeah I feel righteous in this, <laughs> yeah. and, like, this is important to me. Standing firm. Right. But it was also, like, on other perspectives, like, especially working hand-in-hand -hand with a director alongside a producer, yeah. alongside of, like, if we're doing, 
you know, a Snickers branding or yeah, like yeah. we're doing like brand for like this and this and this, or like yeah. we're working with the like national highway protection agency yeah, or yeah. whatever. It's like, you're working between all these people who want different things. Moving it's like, parts, moving parts. Yeah. yeah. So it really like forced me to figure out how to like yeah. show everyone the side that they want to see. And like, yeah, I'm here for the good of everything, but like, here's this thing that I suggest you be aware of. Yeah, and I'm like, how do you, like, make sure that you're never on someone's bad side because yeah. that, like, always grinds, Gears, like, yeah. grinds everything slower. Yeah. Um, and so, like, that was probably the biggest thing that I took out of it was, like, especially being an actor. Like, I know a lot of actors when I was working um, production. It was like, I'd come on to set as the AD. Yeah. And they would, oh, they would treat the production crew like trash really yeah and like that's horrible yeah and it's just like it makes no sense yeah it really doesn't just because like it's the same idea of like hey dude like we're, we're all here just doing for the, the job yeah we're yeah. here for the same reason like, yeah we're people yeah like there's you're not no one's better than anyone it's else. just a different role yeah um and so like i just knew people that would like do that um and a, i would say a lot of times it wasn't intentional but it was like oh, I don't understand why this isn't going my way, so I'm mad about it. Yeah. And it's like, okay, then you just don't understand... Just be patient. Just be patient. ...that, like, stuff's going on that you yeah. don't know. Yeah. Um, and so it really gave me that perspective of, like, especially as an actor, like, I'm not going to know... Yeah. ...everything that's happening. Um, so, like, I definitely have to, like, recognize there are 30 other moving parts here, and if I'm not involved in them, I'm just waiting yeah. to be told yeah. that it's my turn. Um, and that's so I feel like that's probably where your go with the flow attitude works well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like that's probably one of the biggest things was like, uh, you know, we're all there for the same reason, and like, it'll be your turn. Like when yeah, it's your yeah, turn, yeah. it's your turn. Yeah. So don't like. And you're already here. Don't so try to force well your turn. Yeah. yeah. Because like, if you get up in arms about like, ah, oh, I thought we would be done in ten minutes, and it's been twelve minutes, and I'm like. <laughs> My stopwatch says 12. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, then, like, it's it's 12 minutes. Like, give us a couple more. Like, yeah. it's It's fine. all good. Yeah, it's chill. You're fine. We're fine. Yeah, as long as no one's dying. Like, yeah. what are we upset about? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I feel like working that style of production was very much, like, especially with it being so chaotic and, like, we had to, like, everything was so, we were shooting, I think, I mean, I think some of our peak days we were shooting, like, 20 oh god uh like 25 to 30 scenes like oh a my day gosh. oh my gosh and so like you'd Intense. have yeah you'd have like a 12 hour day and you're like okay we have 15 minutes for this scene like get in light it in six minutes and then let's go film it yeah yeah and then like and then it was also like knowing okay we have 30 scenes we're gonna try Mental, to get 30 mentally scenes. Mentally prepare yourself. Right, yeah. and so, like, if we don't get 30 scenes, that's fine. We're yeah. not gonna force 30 scenes, because yeah. it's crazy. Still, still quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, it's crazy to, like, rush someone on all already a rush schedule. Rush for you know 12 I mean? hours. Yeah. 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 So it's like, I'm not gonna... If I'm on a 15-minute schedule, I'm not gonna come in at 8 minutes and be like, why are we not in this? Yeah. Like, why are we not doing What's this? What's going on? Like, What's going on? Yeah. We like, should be on scene 25, and we're only on 22. What's, yeah, what's going like, on here? Like, yeah. no. Like, it's crazy. Like, yeah. just, like, accept what's happening and, like, flow with it. Yeah. Because, like, that oddly makes it smoother. Oh, yeah. Because, like, like, it takes you two minutes to yell at someone to ask why you're not going faster and when they can take the two minutes yeah. to, like, finish it. Like, and then you'd be up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Makes sense. And then yeah. fast forward. Mm-hmm. Seems like you've always had a sense for adventure. And lo and behold. Yeah. We're here. In a. Yeah. In a van. Yeah. Um, but also, you lived in a Kia before. Yeah. So, given the whole lowdown. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I always, growing up, I, you know, I did, like, scouts and, like. Really? Wh- wow. Yeah. Um, I didn't get too far in it. Like, I was. Tie, tie a knot here and there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, I know how to start a campfire and, like, all oh, that perfect. good stuff. Oh, perfect, dude. Like, that's a life skill. Yeah, it's, like, fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's a good trick to have. Yeah. Um, party trick right, right yeah, in the like middle of the living room yeah like set up a tent <laughs> and like all that stuff yeah. like um so I did that growing up and then like I lived in the woods so it was like made I, for it yeah so like I I 
didn't even read a book inside the house. Like, I went out into, like, the backwoods of, like, the house. Experimented like, yourself, yeah. Yeah, like, and, like I, I would grab a book, and, like, we had, you know, uh, our house, and then, like, a small plot of land around it, and we fenced it in, and then there were, like, woods on the uh, east side of the house, and then the other side was, like, plains and, like, for our neighbor's cows and everything. yeah. yeah. And so I'd grab a book and, like, go out into the woods and climb a tree and, like, sit in the tree and, like, read my book. And so, like, I was always outside. Yeah. And, like, that was always a thing. Um, but I was also, like, <laughs> allergic to, like, everything. Yeah. And so, like, even while I enjoyed being outside, it was... Fighting for it. Yeah, awful. Yeah. Um, and then... Um, yeah, and I feel like in college I didn't get a lot of that because, like, theater yeah theater degree it takes Inside. up all your time yeah. um like you lose relationships i don't know how many like uh, relationships that i had it was like just fizzle oh yeah or like i'd <laughs> i'd not <laughs> give it like that light of a turn but like there are some because especially if you're doing like spring show stuff and like the spring especially in south easy every day every it was day, like every day. Oh, it was like every day from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. Yeah. It was like you'd get four hours, if you're lucky, of sleep. Oh, my gosh. And so then, wow. like, yeah, because it's like as well, along with like your shows, you're doing directorial stuff, and then you're doing like side projects that people are doing for like other shows. So you're like, in like 24-hour play festivals, and like there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. And so you're just there constantly. Yeah. Um, and so like you just lose track of everything. Yeah. Um. So, like, I feel like I lost out on a few years of that, um, but I was always very, um, oh, God, what's the word? Uh, like, I, I want to say individualized, but that's not the word. Independent? It, thank you, independent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was very independent, uh, growing up. It was always, like, a thing for me, and then, which is why I was never worried about living in a car when I drove out. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'm doing it for say, myself, This is yeah. fine. Um, so and as, then as independent as it gets. Yeah, and then when I decided to live in uh, van van life. Uh, yeah, because I I still you know I'm independent, but I'm not stupid. So it's yeah. also like I will do my research and figure out what I want and like what I need yeah. and make sure I'm yeah. doing doing it properly so that yeah. I'm not reckless. burning not out reckless. and reckless. Yeah. yeah. Um. So then I like did a lot of research and. It was also very similar to moving out of Durant. I set a date that was June 1st of uh, 2018. And I was like, it's like if I have a van or not, like I'm moving out of my apartment. Um, into, into a vehicle. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaving. Yeah. Like, uh, and I lived with Alex at the time. Nice. Uh, and I like talked to him. I was like, hey man, like this is a thing, like, just so you know. And I gave him, I don't know, like three, four months, yeah. something like that. It was yeah. a while. Um, and then, you know, June started coming around. He was like, hey, man, I see you don't have a van. Um, I, I noticed like, just, a, just a little yeah, bit. There's I, no van in the driveway. Yeah, you haven't found anything yeah, yet. Yeah. Do you want to, like, and I was like, no. No, 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 I got no, it. no it's fine. Yeah. I'm cool. Um, Go with the flow right there. I got it. It'll, it'll turn out. Yeah, dude, it'll be cool. <laughs> and I was always very minimal. Like, yeah. uh, like I was telling you, um, I lived in a hammock. Yeah, that like, is a huge... Yeah, it's yeah, been like it's note. it's been three years now that I've lived or slept you in a hammock. You sleep in a hammock. Yeah, I, yeah, even when I was in an apartment oh before. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I when I was still living with Taylor, my first roommate in Los Angeles, I bought the hammock and like set it up in my bedroom because it was the very minimal like aspect of okay, what can I do that like I can sleep in that gives me the most room that yeah. is like the best of both worlds like, how can I like maximize my small space and make sure like everything is like as small a footprint as it can be yeah uh, and I would al have always pretty much lived very minimal or like nomadic I've always yeah I've never really allowed myself a lot of stuff because I always I've always known even like I'd say in high school I was never big on like relationships mm -hmm. like or like mm -hmm. doing a lot because I was like Oh, I know. Like, keep I, it simple. Yeah. Keep it simple. I know that I'm leaving, and like, I don't want like too many roots to like keep me, and like, I don't want things like tie hole. me down. Yeah. Um. And so, like, I've always lived that nomadic, like, mm. long term nomadic of like two years. Yeah. And then I, ha I, like, I get something an itch. else. Yeah, yeah. Like, at two, like at the two year mark, like I, I have like a 
a new chemical interest, yeah, reaction going on, yeah. of like, I I cannot be here anymore. Like a yeah. claustrophobic, like I gotta I gotta yeah. go. Yeah. Um, that's the adventure right there. Yeah. There's something else out there that I need to know. Right. I like I'm not living everything. Yeah, yeah. And I've always been like very big on like. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, and I am always very big on like putting myself in situations that like I don't know or like I'm not comfortable with or something that's gonna yeah. like broaden a horizon like yeah. I um like stuff like when I was in college for theater like I became a nude model because it was out of ha- my comfort zone yeah it was like out of my comfort zone it was like extremely vulnerable and yeah. I was like well this is something that's like if I can be naked in a room full of like 13 women that are like painting you me yeah like w- what the hell does stage have or like theater yeah, have that's yeah. like more vulnerable than that yeah um so it was like always putting myself in those situations talk about breaking barriers right there like that'll yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a weird one um, <laughs> it, was, it was really fun um but it was like i always had that feel of like i always have to like be changing like i always have to find something new um and i've always lived like even in all the apartments that i i've lived in all my stuff was contained to my bedroom yeah like You'd walk into like my last apartment uh, with Alex, and there's there were from wall to wall like artwork and paintings. And yeah. There was like a uh, work bit workout bench in like the middle of the room, and yeah. like a TV and like all this stuff. And it was like people would come over and they're like, "Oh, this is crazy. This is a lot of stuff. Like, what's yours and what's theirs?" And yeah. Like, oh no, this is this is all me. This is all theirs. Oh, like every all theirs. Like everything in the wow. living room. It's like. Oh no, no, like every like photo you see, every like every item that's in this room or like even in the kitchen or like in the den, like yeah. anywhere, that's roommates. Like if you want to see the stuff that I have It's all in my room. Open my room. Yeah. Like I've got my hammock, my computer, my dresser and my closet. Yeah. And like that's, the stuff that's, that's in all you need. Yeah. yeah. Uh and then so moving into the van, uh when I moved out into the Kia, because it was that moment of like I had options on like vans mm-hmm. to buy mm-hmm. but it was I just didn't feel the right one yeah like I just hadn't found it yet yeah um and so we did not rush it though like, yeah I yeah. felt good about it yeah. uh so I got a storage unit and a P.O. box and like I slept in my Kia Rio for a month and a half like almost two Dang. months um and it was in the passenger seat or in yeah. the trunk Oh God, not the trunk. Um, I, just, I I feel like that was my closet, so I could. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, it was the passenger seat. I would always like just hop into the passenger seat, throw my sleeping bag on, and like oh, yeah. lean it. And like, luckily, it was a seat that reclined a hundred and eighty degrees. Flat. Oh wow! Yeah, so that's a game changer. Like, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, so it was like great, and I did that, and I actually really liked living in the Kia. Yeah. Like there was like. I was not in any rush. Wow. Once I, once what I, the, what was the best part? Like, what, what made it so enjoyable? It was honestly, it was waking up to the sunlight. Mm. That was what it was. It was I would wake up happily at six a.m. Oh, yeah. when the sun broke, and I was like, ah, this is natural. Yeah. Like I'm, even even though I'm in my vehicle, I'm outside. Like yeah. I'm in this weird space of nature where I'm not like confined to like these concrete walls yeah. I can I can go wherever I want and like I am where I am yeah like, heck yeah um, and so that was my favorite part honestly was like waking up naturally to the sunlight yeah um, and that was a game changer for me and so I lived in the Kia for a month and a half and then I found this van a brewery uh, Aftershock Aftershock yeah Aftershock sure. Brewing yeah. Company in Temecula. I drove down to... So t- random. Very random. Was, I think it was a Craigslist ad. Oh, wow. Even uh, even more random. Yeah. Hey, you come check out my white van on yeah, Craigslist. Um, yeah, dude. And so I drove down, and, like, I took my buddy Nick, and um, we test drove it, and, like, checked it out, and, like, uh, he's, you know, we do car stuff together, so, like, yeah. he, like, he helps me work on this, and I help... Oh, that's like, nice. I help him work on his car, yeah. and, like, we're, like, we're always is he is he just his car mechanically or he too is looking to live in his vehicle no no he's just like got it he's just a DIY like handy tinkering guy. yeah 
um, he's always doing, he's always doing something. Yeah. Um, and so like he likes having that independence of like if I can, if I can fix it, I'll fix it. Yeah. Got it. Um, and so like we always help each other out and like work on stuff together. And so I took it, I took him down to look at the van with me, and we both liked it. Uh, it's obviously as anything, it's got its like characters. Yeah, it's, it's got, got some its character. flaws. <laughs> yeah, like the sliding door. Yeah. Um, I use. I use the step, as you can see, as storage for the most part, because, like, pro- I don't know if you can see where you're sitting, uh-huh. but the top of the door uh-huh. is actually not sealed. Oh. So it's, like, oh. the... Oh. Something happened. <laughs> um, the owner said his son had hit the side of the... With his head? The door. Yeah, it looks like he, like, juggernaut ran, rushed ran the side into of it. it. Yeah. Um, and... It's, there's a huge dent in it, in the side. Oh. And so, because of the dent, it pulled the top away from its seal. Mm. So where I'm sitting, I can see a huge, like, seal break. Uh, um, so it's got its characters. Yeah. But I was, like, driving it, and it felt really nice, and um, everything looked clean, and the guy was really nice, uh, and he was very open about, like, stuff that was all its on. flaws yeah. and stuff. And it was a very workhorse, like... It was a very worker's yeah. manual van, yeah. and it was, like, I saw a lot of, like, me yeah. in it, because it was, like, uh, you know, I've always been, like, a worker, and, like, yeah. uh, you know, like, I worked on the ranch, like, my neighbor's, like, cow farm, and then uh, I was, like, head of maintenance for our theater department, yeah. so I was always, like, the workman guy. Handyman. Um, and, yeah, and my dad was a mechanic, and, like... Oh, yeah. Um, all that stuff and like a carpenter and like I yeah. did I did carpentry in college and it was like a very like handy van yeah and I was like yeah this is the one this is it yeah and so like I just bought it there in Temecula and had Nick drive my car back and since then I've been since day one I've been living in it um it took me six months <laughs> to put to get uh, it up to up to speed, yeah. To get it up to any type of code. So this is insulation. Yeah. Right here. So it's like, um, I forget it, like what R five or R three point five insulation, uh, but like all the sides we double insulated, uh, and the roof I think we also double insulated, um, and then we have three quarters plywood on top of the insulation, and then on top of the plywood we just have this like. Uh, white siding yeah um and so after six months because i bought it in july and i drove it back to oklahoma for christmas yeah so really break it in yeah oh yeah Hold um on. but until december until christmas i hadn't done any work to it it was exactly a hammock and that's it <laughs> yeah i like literally connected it to that like you know because it's a cargo van yeah. so it's like got all these like notches in the wall so I yeah. just clicked it to that notch and to that notch and oh, that wow. was and I just had oh, two wow, yeah yeah and I had two like big duffel bags one was like clean clothes and one was dirty, dirty clothes, clothes. <laughs> all you need and that was that was it that's yeah. all I had um you know my laptop um and so for six months it was just as it is and like it was cold as hell at night oh and, yeah like, oh yeah you know in the summer it was 150 Sweating. degrees yeah. in here. Yep. Um, and then in December, Dad and I, and my mom also helped. Uh, my mom helped me do like the flooring, the, like snap wood flooring. Yeah. Um, and like put in the cabinets. Um, and just coming together. Yeah, and like we just did that, and then it's been six months now since then, so it's probably time to start doing something else. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's got some got some going to do it's still got some places to go but the for right now it's exactly what i need and i'm not as i as i feel in like most things i've done it's like i'm not in any rush to like go anywhere too fast so it's part of the process yeah it's where it is so i'm gonna go frequently asked questions that i get asked yeah oh living here you go i get you yeah 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 it's always well where do you shower yeah classic 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 question. question Um, I have a 24-hour fitness membership. Yeah, perfect. Easy. No brain. Yeah, easy. Uh, uh, you get bathroom, you get gym, you get showers. Yeah. Um, you get it's access. A great place. Yeah, as long as you, <laughs> as long as you don't 
pick like one specific one to go to, you yeah. can get like Fall all around a little bit. Yeah, you can go like any twenty four hour fitness like across the nation. Um, so like even if you're traveling, you can just hit up a twenty four hour fitness. You've already got your membership. Yeah, get a you don't have to pack. pay eight dollars or twelve dollars for a for shower good. like you yeah. do at the Love's truck stops. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like really simple. They're pretty close to just about everywhere. Yeah. Like I'm always within like seven minutes of a twenty four hour fitness. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I feel like it's always something that people. It's like their go to question. It is their go to question, and it's never thought of. I know. Like, <laughs> well, like, I feel like like the answer's there. Yeah, because I always my my thing is always okay. If you if you just put it on yourself for like yeah. ten minutes and ask yourself, where would you go? Where would you go? Yeah. yeah, like right now, if you could not get to a bathroom, if you did not have your re- if your house burned down right now, where would you go? Where would you go to the bathroom? Yeah, and they're like, oh, probably the gym. And I'm like, there you, there go. you go. Wow, it's Boom. that easy. Yeah, uh, yeah. Do you use the bottle for taking a whiz in the night? Or I, you... No, I I've had to like once or twice. Uh, emergency cases. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it. Um, have you had any other close calls? No, I've like oh, I nice. Especially like I am really good about like if I'm asleep You're I'm asleep. not I'm not waking up. Oh, I, if I've got to do anything, I'm not waking up. That's and great. then I'll wake up and I'm like okay, oh, okay, it's time. Like, here we go. I and like I've got time. Yeah. So I'm like, "Hey, I can, you can head over to the 24-hour fitness." Like Yeah. But yeah, I've never been in a bad situation. Like I've lived in it for almost yeah. a year now. And yeah. like never had any Easy. super close calls, yeah. And then, food is always the next question. Yep. Um, What's your strategy for food? I d- I have a single burner propane cooktop. Single burner is where it's at. Yep. I got I got a big Coleman grill. Oh yeah. Too clunky for me. Yeah. I mean good. I use it, but I think it's too big. Yeah, I eventually want a super clunky one because I eventually want an oven, like a yeah. propane oven. Yeah. That has both the cooktop and then the yeah, yeah. big oven. Um, that's getting fancy. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's real fancy. fancy. That's yeah. glamping right yeah. there. Um, but I have the single cooktop, and then I you know, I do a lot of uh, those camping-style like pastas where you just heat up water and boil it. Um, or PB&J is always a classic. I don't have Dude, a fridge. Love PB&J. So it's like you got to do stuff that will keep. Um, and, yeah, those three things will keep. Yep. Um, I also do – I try to as often as possible – uh, like keep up my veggie and like fruit intake. That's really smart. Um, so every so often, like <coughs> I always buy like the big, like at Ralph's or Kroger's or wherever they'll do like the huge thing of apples that you yeah. can buy for really cheap. Yeah. I'll grab that and like a bunch of bananas or like a big thing of oranges and like have them in the like my cabinets at the lowest rung, so it's like yeah. super shady and like really cool. Yeah. And they'll keep for a long time down there. That's nice. Because it's like almost a natural fridge of like yeah. shaded. It's not. There's no sun, heat yeah. down there. Like, uh, it's pretty nice, and they keep for a while. And like, tuna, it's always a classic. Tuna is great. It's yeah. incredible. That's a go-to. Yep, I'll do like pickles. Dang. Um, yeah, because they'll like they'll keep for for a while and not need wow. like refrigerating. The They're you know. great. Um, I wish I could find more pickled items like pickled eggs and like pickled okra. Yeah. Dude, I bet they're out there. Ooh. If not, pickled okra. I I love pickled okra. It was what like the one heck of is my okra. F- you don't know what okra is? No, no Dude, idea. I gotta find somewhere to take you for okra. It's um, it's just like a seed vegetable. It's like um, it looks like a little tiny like cornucopia almost. Like it's a string. Yeah. Uh, and then it's just like filled with these like white seeds. Wow. Um, it's really sounds elaborate. Yeah. It, uh, when you bite it, sounds it, a sophisticated vegetable. It is. You have I do not think it is sophisticated. I think yeah. it is very like southern and like a very like dirty like wow. vegetable. Got um, it. Got it. Um, so I definitely don't. I wouldn't classify it as that. Um, but they're very good. Um, it was a huge thing in like Oklahoma and Texas. Like, if you're having a barbecue, like, gotta have okra. If you're having uh, you a lot of people actually didn't do grilled okra. Yeah. It was like you get deep fried, yeah. deep fried okra, and it's wow. incredible. Yeah, um, people don't like it because it's very slimy. If okay. you like, 
if you grill it, if you don't like fry it, yeah, it's very slimy. But um, it's very good. Uh, Sounds gotta, bomb. Got to find somewhere to okra it. Yeah, there's not a lot out here, but pickled okra is very good, and no one in LA sells it. And oh, I oh dude, like that's I found a market it, right there. I found it once at a Ralph's like two years ago, and I have gone back to that. I don't live in that area anymore. And I will go back to that Ralph's like every couple of months and be just like, just to see, just to see if they've got it. But they definitely don't carry it anymore. It has been like two years since they've carried Yikes. it, and I still go to that Ralph's Yikes. to like hopefully catch a glimpse of yeah. it one day. Um, but yeah, that's essentially what it is. Just fruits, vegetables, those like baby bell cheeses. Yeah, because like they don't need to be refrigerated because they're in like wax. Yeah, so like you can keep those for a long time. Do Obviously, that. you don't yeah. try to keep them too long, but just cuts. Dude, I was doing the PB and J diet. Like, he was great. I did it for too long. Like, yeah. I was only having PB and J's for like two weeks straight. Yeah, it'll wreck you, dude. Two weeks? Yeah, nah, I, dude. I, I was no time at all. Every single day for yeah, every dude. meal. Oh, bro. Before, like the first roommate I had, uh, Taylor. Yeah. Um, it, there were four of us in that house, and I, honestly, and they could testify to this. It was like the last four months at least that I lived there oh my gosh I didn't dirty a plate oh I didn't gosh. dirty anything but Dude, a butter knife born for this like oh, I it was my favorite thing I would walk down like three times a day like make two PB and J's folded in a paper towel walk oh, yeah. back up to my room and like they were worried for a long time you putting peanut butter on both sides or nah side? dude oh bro sorry you put I put them on both sides and, and then jelly on top of and both then of them and then jelly on both sides and then can't I do it jelly. no can't do you it you do a half and half the, yeah the jelly doesn't sog the bread if you do it that way I need a little bit of soggy bread okay like a little bit of like wet bread a little, little, little moist little, yeah, little yeah, yeah. dampness a little like gelled bread yeah it's pretty good I feel you yeah homeless experience have you have you encountered any homeless <laughs> no so I'd say the closest thing to like I'll give you two examples. One, because I, at this point in my life, fairly positive it was just a drunk guy and he wasn't homeless. Yeah. Um, I was living in my Kia. This is when I was living in the Kia. Yeah. I was still discovering, like, where was good to park and, yeah. like, everything. Yeah, that's hard to figure out, yeah. Yeah, especially, like, the first couple mm, weeks or yeah. months or whatever. Month, yeah. Um, and so I parked on this street that was... Like, retrospectively, I was parked right in front of this bar. Um, like, I was directly across the street from this bar. Yeah. But it was, like, dark, and, like, their bar is very... There's no lights on the outside. Yeah. It's just very, like, calm and, like, it's nothing going on. Yeah. And so I didn't think about it. And, like, I turned the car off, and I have, like, manual locks. Um, so I forgot to lock one of the back doors. I got in the passenger seat. Um, got in the sleeping, sleeping bag, bag. Yeah, and I'm cozy. asleep. And like I said, like I'm a heavy sleeper. Yeah. Um, I've definitely become a lighter sleeper living in the van. Um, but at the time, I was out. I was like, you could smash my window. Wow. And I would probably yeah. just like shake a little bit. I'm like, yeah. Ah, ah. Um, but I was sleeping there, and then I hear my car, sh- or I feel my car shake. And I hear, like, a thunk oh, right. of the door closing. And, like, I'm still, like, half asleep and, like, not recognizing what's happening. And I just look, because I'm flat. My head's in the back seat. Yeah. So I yeah. just, like, look to my, like, up into my left. Yeah. And there's a dude sitting there. And I'm, like, not mad, not scared. Yeah. yeah. Just, like, dude, get out of my car. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And he, like, looks at me super confused. And I'm, like... Dude, get out of my, get out of my yeah, car! Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, and I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he just like, Bleh, and like gets out of the car. Oh my god! And like he shuts it, and I was like, what? was that real? Yeah. Yeah. Like a, I was like, I could. I woke up the next day, literally not, could not tell myself if it was real or if it was a dream. Yeah. Like, cause I was so out of it. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, okay, it was either some homeless dude that just wanted to hang out yeah or some drunk dude that thought I was his uber yeah um and then the other homeless experience was I was in the van in North Hollywood it was incredible 
I was um, in the hammock and just sitting there reading my book. Yeah. And I hear this guy start like shuffling past and like you you know you can hear like yeah talking to himself and like doing this whole thing. And so I'm like, okay, it's homeless guy. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not really worried that area's got a lot of homeless, and I've never been accosted yeah. by anyone. You just kind of just got to be aware. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, and so I'm like, okay, that's a guy. And he gets right next to this door, and he just, like, he, you know, they, like, every so often they'll just, like, blurt out things. Yeah. And he... Oh, no. I laughed so, so hard, because I couldn't hear anything. I couldn't hear his conversation to himself. Then he got to this door, and he just yells, God's favorite movie has an 8% on Rotten Tomatoes, (laughs) and just keeps walking. And I, like, I laughed so yeah. hard. And, like, it took every ounce of willpower to Dude, not open it yeah. and go, what movie yeah, are that's you talking what I about? Know. Like, I could not, I absolutely had no idea what was happening. And I was like, oh, I'll never figure out what movie he was talking about. That's I will God's never figure out what, A, God's favorite movie is, Which and, is important why, to know. Yeah. and why... It only has an eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh my gosh, that's what we want to know. That it's, it's haunted me to this day. It still haunts me that I didn't ask Batman what movie he was talking about. Oh man, like maybe maybe in the final days of uh, the van life, you'll just go chill out there and just. Oh, maybe, hopefully I'll see him yeah. again one day and just yeah. be like, "Hey man, let me know. Let me know." About like ten months ago. <laughs> Do you remember talking to yourself <laughs> about God's favorite movie? And he's like. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. All dogs go to heaven, too. <laughs> like, oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice night, sir. He'll see yeah. you later. Here you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'd say that's, like, the closest experience that yeah. I've had. Nothing, like, no one's broken into it. Nothing's, like... Thank goodness. Yeah. yeah, no one's, like, tried to, like, get anything out of me. Like, no one's tried to, like, mug me or anything. So it's, all, it's been good. Hmm. It's been a good time. Um, the last frequently asked question that I typically... Which I don't know. I, I get it frequently, but I don't know if it's a frequent for most van lifers. Yeah. I always get asked, um, do you get lonely? I get asked that quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so I think that, so I, I've known, before I moved into the van, I've known a few people that lived in their vans. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a big thing that they told me was like, mm. yeah. And I found that really interesting because um, that, that was one of, specifically my buddy Billy. He was like, yeah, man, like, I've been on and off, like, living in the van for, like, two years. Yeah. And, like, that's my biggest hurdle is, like, I will get so lonely. Wow. Um, But also, like, I feel he moved out here in the van. Yeah. I, when I moved into the van, I was lucky enough to, like, have lived in places and, like. Met some people. Yeah. Built some community. Right. Built this relationship and, like, these communities that you're talking about. And so, in the van it actually made me more sociable. Mm. Like, which is, everyone finds it really interesting because they're like, that doesn't make sense. You live by yourself yeah. in a steel box. And yeah. Like, yeah, but if I want to go hang out with my buddy in Just Canoga Park, I can drive out there and yeah. sleep there. Yeah. And like, then go wherever I want to the next day. So yeah. it's actually made me a lot more sociable Yeah. because... More freedom. Yeah, I have the freedom to just be wherever I want to. And I, in an apartment, I wouldn't ever really be alone. Yeah. Because, you know, you, unless, you know, they're on vacation or whatever, yeah. but, like, your roommates are always there. Yeah. Um, and I've never lived by myself. Like, yeah. I've always had, A, my brother, who, like, since we were kids, we shared the same room. Yeah. Like, bunk beds until yeah. we were in college. Like, even in college, like, our freshman year, we stacked our two yeah. beds on top yeah. of each other. Um. And so I always shared a room, or then after that, a house. But my house, the first house I moved into, was three people. It's a one-bedroom house, and I lived in the hallway. Wow. So it was like, and then when I moved into a nicer house, I had the room that didn't have a door on it. Yeah. So, like, I was never alone. Yeah, yeah. Like, all I, the time. People yeah, all I, the time. I never had my solitude Yeah. Uh, until I moved out here. Um, and so living in the van, I actually really enjoy being alone because like no one's interrupting me. Yeah. It's like, if I want to be alone, I be cover alone. up the windows yeah. 
and I'm just with myself and yeah. do whatever I want. And then if I want to be out and see people, I can be anywhere yeah. and be like, hey, I can be on your side of town if you're not yeah, doing anything. Yeah. So like, I'll be there. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, I think there are times where I've been more susceptible to being like, oh, I don't want to move around in the next couple of yeah. days. I just want to like Stick hang up. out and like, yeah, stay in one spot. And that can be a little lonely, but ultimately like I find it more intriguing. Like I like liberating. it. Liberating? Yeah, I like it a lot more. Um, and I, like I said, I think I've become more sociable with it. So I feel less lonely actually now that I live in the van. Yeah. I agree. I think I had more, or I do have more, uh, control of my time. Yeah. And when I'm in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bird. So then, because I'm in more control of my time, I can do more of the things that I want, and the more things that I do that I like, right. frees up more time to go and see people. Yeah, I think so, so too. I think it's a great way to put it. And also, I, I, the same for me is like, like I said, I had a lot of friends that wanted to experience the verb life, so they'd come, they'd spend the night, and that was... Yeah that was really good but then they'd go away and then I'd get alone time because I'm introverted so I yeah. I recharge from being alone yeah, so yeah I think it's I think there's a balance to all of it for sure yeah I think as long as you're not like putting yourself in solitude to put yourself isolating in solitude isolating yourself yeah, yeah like I feel like as long as you're actively not isolating yourself you can be fine yeah. like as long as like you said you have a community in some way because mm-hmm. um, that's the easiest thing like my buddy Billy that was his thing he's like I didn't have a community so yeah. when I came out here in the van came out alone and was still alone yeah and so like he didn't have anyone to like hang out with and talk to and like do that so he just hung out at the beach which is great but like, he, definition of a beach bum yeah yeah he just that's all he did and he just hung out with himself until like he found his community um, so I think as long as you have that it's pretty good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, final question. Ooh, okay. What is the the life strategy from this podcast? What do we, what are we pulling from this? Ooh, gosh. Uh, ooh, hold on. <coughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> you almost made it. <coughs> Jesus. Oh. Oh, almost. We almost did it. Hold on while I cough my brains out. Yeah, God, I'm dizzy. Um, life strategy. Woof. Um, Woof. I always feel like... Oh, jeez. The life strategy, I feel like I always live and try... I don't force it on people, obviously. But, like, I always try to, like, give people a glimpse of, like, the go with the flow, like... Mm-hmm don't stress over things you can't stress about so like you, sh- you can't control yeah like yeah exactly like don't stress about the things you have no control over so like I feel probably the strategy that we're talking about is like be control be in control of what you need to and let go of the things that you can't mm-hmm. control because mm-hmm. that's gonna make you just so much happier and like really put into perspective about like what's important to you and like what you need to concentrate on yeah. I feel like is my big takeaway from everything that we've been talking about mm. what do you think mine is I I like that you are strong with integrity mm-hmm. like I think it's dope that you stand up for yourself and stand up for things that are right I think that's a big takeaway um simple living is always going to be good i think being aware of the impact of the words that you have or the words that you say i think think that's a really good one yeah yeah that's huge um oh i love the sense of adventure i think that's huge i think that's something a lot of people miss that's what i'm saying yeah and like that is the quickest whether it's like friendship or relationship or what have you that's my quickest turn off is like if you're not adventurous in anything I'm like I don't 
I have literally nothing to say to you. Yeah. Like, we are not on the same page. You got nothing to do. Yeah, nothing to talk about. Yeah. Uh, so I think that is a good one, for sure. I think more people need to be even, like, slightly more adventurous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, start small. Yeah, you know? exactly. You don't need to do it, like, climb Kilimanjaro yeah. tomorrow. Make it, like, six months. No. Yeah, just, exactly. Uh, just start training. Yeah, do it now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't need to do that. But like, You can wear socks or sandals. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> Chacos. Yeah, break break out of the, the yeah. flip flop. Huh? <laughs> so yeah, I think that's a really good one. I like that one. Where can we find you on the internet? Um, I really the only place you can really find me anymore is Instagram. Bless. Uh, it's at the Tanner Reisner. Um, you can try to follow me on Twitter. You could try. But, like, good luck on seeing anything I post, because I will post, like, every six months or something. Nice. Yeah, when someone, like, finally call, like, physically calls me. And it's like, will you please? Like, Say my, something. Normally it's my brother, because he's always on Twitter. And he's like, yeah. I have tagged you in, like, 15 things. Yeah. Can you please respond? <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, I have a Twitter. <laughs> I forgot. And, but, yeah, hit me up on Instagram. Um, check out the van life and the oh, yeah. on-set acting adventures and whatnot, all the yeah. stupid stuff that I post. Yeah. It's all there? Yep. Sweet. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Sweet. Bye. Let's go get a brewski. Beer.